So this that we hopefully got working is going to be our template to do the same thing for our web app. We need to do the same three big concepts. One, have some sort of button that prompts for the name. Two, get that name and, and store it internally. And three, display it on screen. The same thing that we've done here. So I'm going to leave that open there, maybe just to remind myself of the code. And I will go back to the index. Let's go back to the index of the project, the web project. The web project, I want to add a brand new button in the About SDCE screen. I want to add a brand new button on this pop-up screen here next to Get Directions. So we need to find it in our few hundred lines of code. So I'm going to just press Control F, Get Directions. That should jump me to about line 267. So at about line 267 is where our pop-up screen is at and I see the first button there. I want a new button inside of line 270. That button there works, so I'm just going to save myself some time and copy and paste it. I'm going to copy line 267, which is a button, and paste it into line 270, which of course then I need to spruce up. So copy 267 to 270. It's no longer going to go anywhere, so the href we need to fix, it'll be pound. rel, we need to remove that completely, it's no longer external. Data roll, it's a button. Data icon, we'll choose another kind of icon. We have a little user, a little generic person icon, we'll use that. And then of course we'll change the text, maybe we'll call it personalize or something. So line 270, change the href to pound, remove completely the rel property. It's no longer external. It's still a button. Data icon now will say user. And the text will be customize. Before we go on, we want this button to actually then run a function. So we will add the onClick property. It uh, doesn't quite matter where we add it, but we'll add it right here at the end. We've got the property href, the property data role, property data icon, and then I'll add the property on click equals. Which function? We haven't defined a function, but we'll just use the same sort of names that we that we used a moment ago, um, which was get login. Well, it's called get login. Doesn't quite mean the same thing. We'll just call that get name. Open close parentheses semicolon. So this is going to run a function called get name, which is not defined yet. But at the very least, I want to save it and run it. I want to look on that screen and see that I've got a button waiting for us. It won't work yet. There's no function called get name defined yet. Let me back up a little bit here, and that's the rest of that code. All right, so I'm going to save that. Just to see if it's working, I'm going to run it. About SDCE, there's the buttons. Get directions, customize. Doesn't do anything yet because there's no function called get name yet. We're going to create a function called get name in our JavaScript, in our JavaScript file. Remember, we're writing all of our JavaScript in a separate JavaScript file so that we can reuse it. So in your project folder, you want to open the kodika.extra.js file. Actually, isn't this the first time we edit that? We've worked with kodika.extra.css. Yeah, so this is our first time. We're going to edit the JavaScript file this time. So go back to your project and edit kodika.extra.js. And then here in our code, 
in our JavaScript file, we'll write function, the name of the function we just referenced a moment ago, get name, open close parentheses, open close curly brace, semicolon to end that statement. Before I start to do the local storage, even though I feel confident I know how to work it now, a few things could go wrong. I could misspell the function definition here and the function call in the other file. Even worse, I could have this file not even connected to my index file. So I don't want to go so far and write 40 lines of code and it doesn't work. I want to simply see, is that button working? Is, it, is that button, is that other file linked to this file? So at the very, very quickest thing that I like to do is just make a quick alert, an alert that just says it works, or anything you want. But all I'm trying to do here is make sure all my ducks in a, are, in, are in order. So I want to save both files, the HTML and the JavaScript, save it and run it. Go to that button and click it. You should just get a simple pop-up that says it works. If it does, then we'll deal with local storage. If it doesn't, then we have to pause to see what went wrong. Did I misspell something? Is the file not connected? Is the, is the file in the wrong place? Sometimes that happens to people. Your index is in one folder, and then your JavaScript is in another folder, and therefore the link is not active. Let's see, I'm going to run the index. Customize. It works. And that's my code so far. If it didn't quite work, it probably means you, you might have misspelled something. Maybe you didn't put the right capital letters and so forth. Did it not work for anyone? All right, so if it does work here, then I'm going to deal with adding local storage. Question? Um, I think it should, get up, it should go up when you hit it, so I get directions, right? No, you hit uh, custom. Thank you. 
All right, everyone. So uh, we seem to have confirmed that this will work. It is calling the function we've created. So now it's just a matter of basically filling this function with the code that we learned uh, in the last hour. So I'm going to remove that alert, or you can comment it out actually if you'd like. I should follow my own advice. I'm just going to comment it out because I might want to use it again later. Remember the double slash at the beginning of a line comments out that whole line. So comment it out and then on the next line we'll fill in the um, local storage. So we're going to use local storage dot We'll use username, oops, no space there, username, that's the local storage object, the variable, equals prompt, so the pop-up will happen, ask the person's name, in the prompt the text that will be asked is 
what's your name? That's going to be asked, captured, saved in local storage. We'll see if that's working. Console.log. And we will output local storage dot username. We'll see if that works so far. It's not going to display on screen yet. Remember, three parts. The button, which triggers this. The second is the function that actually does it. And then the third is displays it on screen. We've done the first two. We're on our way to the third. And the third uh, will confirm that we can do the third if, if we're seeing that we're capturing that name. So go ahead and save it and run it. You should then get a, a pop-up that asks your name. And then, of course, look in your console and see if it's saving your name. Okay, so I'm going to load my file and I'm going to load the console. So inspect element console. I'm going to go to the about screen. There's the customize button. I'm going to click it. It asks for what's your name. Put in my name. Click OK. And then in the console we get the, that we get that output. basically what we've looked at before, now we're applying it to our project. Okay, so in order to display this on screen, we can do the same thing we did previously, document, get element by ID, etc. However, notice that code was document uh, dot get element by ID. An ID, as you recall, can only be used once per, per page, per HTML file. I want the name that I type here to be visible 10 times in the app. I want it to be on the home page, I want it to be in the about page, I want it to be wherever. Therefore an ID will not work. So if we can't use an ID since it can only be used once for a project, what other thing can we use? A class. So instead of saying ID equals something, we will have class equals something and we'll have some code here to make uh, to make any instance of that particular class display our name. So we'll get back to this in a moment. Let's instead go to our app and put our placeholders where do we want the name to appear. We'll have to rewrite a little bit because our terminology. I want it to say on the home screen, okay, instead of a font of knowledge, I want it to say, welcome, Victor. In the art screen, I wanted to say, take an art class, Victor. And in computers, I wanted to say, learn computers, Victor. Just proof of concept, I want my name to appear on each one of those three spots. So we'll write that code a little bit. We'll rewrite that code. First of all, line 55. We'll say, welcome. Now getting ahead of ourselves, because I've taught this class before, we're going to have, um, just like we did in our practice, when the app loads, if the person had given their name, I want their name to show. If they never wrote a name, this is the first time, I don't want their name to show. So we'll have to have that if-else stuff a little later. But there's going to be a placeholder here to display the person's name. And so the way that we'll do this is we will have um, something that we haven't looked at yet uh, really called a span. So where we've got the word welcome, we'll type the span tag, and the span has a pair. Span is related to div. The big difference is well, the similarities are that these are two generic containers 
that don't display anything on screen. They're generic placeholders. The big difference between div and span is that div wants to take up a whole line for itself. It's what's known as a block level element. It wants to take up the space for itself. It's going to push other things off to the next line. So if we use the div here, it would say welcome and then your name would appear below it because a div wants to take up a block level of space. A span, in contrast, is, a, is an inline element, meaning it'll stay on the same line and it'll try to play nice with everything else already in the line. So then it'll have welcome and your name in the same line. We wouldn't be able to achieve that with a div. They would fight for the same line, and one would lose and go below. Right here they will both play nice on the same line. We're using a span as a generic container. We won't put anything inside of the span tags because it's just a placeholder, but then we need to give this a class so that we can reference it in the JavaScript. So inside of that span tag, we'll write class, quotes, and we will call this um, welcome message. It's a class so we can reuse it. In, in at least three screens of my app, I want it to say my name. So let's copy that whole chunk. Span to slash span. Copy that whole chunk so that we don't misspell the class. Copy that whole chunk, and then we will paste it in a couple more places throughout our project. Let's go find the art classes line, which is line uh, 128. 128 on the art screen simply says art classes. And I want it to say, take an art class, Victor. So we'll say, I will say, learn, uh, take an art class. And then paste that span because that's going to be our placeholder for the person's name. Take an art class, John. That's line 128. Now we need to find the screen of computers. and paste again this span. What line is that computer's heading at? Yeah, at about 201 or so. So uh, at 201 it says computer classes. I wanted to say learn computers, Victor. So we'll paste in the span there. Anywhere that we use this span, the name will appear. Because it's a class. If it was an ID, it would not work. Only one thing in our whole document can have that ID. But we can do this with classes. It will require us to see some brand new code we haven't seen before, but then this will give us the solution we're looking for. And the thing about programming is there's so many solutions for the same problem. Um, so there's many ways to do the to accomplish the same thing. Here's one way. I want to save the, the HTML file here, and now we'll switch over back to the JavaScript file, and we'll tell it, okay, we've captured the person's name, now we want to display that name in all of these places throughout, this, throughout the uh, HTML file where the placeholder is at. So back to the JavaScript. After the console log output, we're going to take advantage here of jQuery. Uh, in order to accomplish what we want to accomplish with plain old JavaScript, it would take a fair amount of lines of code. That's what jQuery and other JavaScript libraries are for, to save time. So we'll start off with the dollar sign, the dollar symbol, which denotes basically a jQuery shortcut. Open close parentheses. Sort of like how we had 
document.getElementById, we have something very similar for classes, but we can refer to it in shorthand like this, and then in quotes, the name of the class in question, which is dot welcome message. The dot there is very important. This is basically saying, in a sense, document.getElementById, kind of, right here. And then, um, very similar to the inner HTML uh, property that we've seen before, instead we're going to use this other jQuery specific code, dot HTML, open close parentheses, semicolon. That's sort of like the inner HTML equals X. So all of that could, in a sense, be written out as document.getElementById, welcome message, dot inner HTML equals Victor. Uh, but it's all see how it's compressed. This is what we'll be seeing if we use jQuery. It helps us write complex things a little simpler. In the parentheses, what we need to write here then is the basically the person's name, which would be local storage dot username. Try that now. Save it and run it. Let's see what happens. It'll ask for the name, it'll store it in local storage, and then here it'll basically display the name on screen in that placeholder. Let's see if it works. Does it work? Kind of. Let's see. And ask my name, I'll put a name, click OK, close that. Welcome, Victor. Art. Take an art class, Victor. Computers. Learn computers, Victor. The problem is that the that the name is appearing is appearing exactly next to what was already there. So we need to add that empty space. To get, this, to get practice with this, we will add this space in the JavaScript instead of the HTML, because sometimes that's what we need. We, we need to dynamically put in some space or something into the HTML instead of it already existing in the HTML. So I need a space there. That will require we continue to edit the code like this. Quotes, space plus, space. So something is going to be visible before the person's name. And that something will be, grammatically, it should say, welcome, comma, Victor. Take an art class, comma, Victor. Learn computers, comma, Victor. So actually, I'll put a comma and then a space. And it'll print that on screen. It'll print a comma and a space and then the person's name. And then also for fun, we can do this. At the end of that line, in the parentheses, space plus, quotes, exclamation point. It'll say whatever starting message is already in the HTML, and comma space, and the person's name, and exclamation point, right after the person's name. It'll display the exclamation point. That's not any special kind of JavaScript, it's going to display an exclamation point on screen because it's in quotes. So see if that works. Let's see. I'll go to the about, I'll customize, add a name, close.
close the pop-up. Welcome, Vince. Take an art class, Vince. Learn computers, Vince. Welcome, Anna. Take an art class, Anna. Learn computers, Anna. This is basically what we what we did on the practice file with some modification because now we've got a class to deal with, a class that we reuse throughout the project. You might have noticed as you test this, because that's the that's part of a the app process as well, testing it and retesting it and beta testing it and getting other people's opinions. You might have noticed if I run this again. Wait a minute, why doesn't it say Welcome Anna anymore. I thought local storage was saving that name permanently. It is. It's still in the it's still in the local storage, but just like the example that we did together, we need to tell it as soon as the app loads, pull up that name and display it on screen. It won't do it unless we program it. The computer will only do as much as you tell it to do and no more. If you never planned for a contingency, it won't do it. And in my mind, it makes perfect sense. I type the name, I close the app, I come back tomorrow, my name is still there. That makes perfect sense to me because I have an advanced brain, but the computer doesn't have one. So we need to tell it that we want that. So we'll go on here. Same thing as before, we'll do this little load name thing. We'll make an if-else statement. If there's no name, don't display it. If there is a name, display it. That'll be pretty much verbatim. So after this get name function, we will create another function, load name. You will have the if else statement again. Uh, I have a semicolon at the end of the function, but not a semicolon at the end of the whole if block. That one doesn't need it. It's pretty consistent syntax overall, except when it's not. This is one of them. You don't need a semicolon at the end of any of that if or else or curly brace. But you would inside of the curly braces. That's the odd part. But um, here we're going to check, is there a name? No, don't display it. Or ignore it. There is a name? Good, display it. So same as before, if statement here. We're checking local storage dot username equals equals undefined. That local storage is either undefined or it has something. Those are the only two options. Either it's undefined or it has something, anything. So if it has, if it ha if it's set as undefined, there's no name to display. So the if again does nothing. Do nothing. No name has been input. And the else part would be the other side of that coin. There is a name, so let's display it on screen. Basically copy and paste line 6 again. If your line 6 worked and it did display the name, then we will reuse it to display the name as soon as the, the site loads. So at this point, we're almost there because we have not called that load function. 
exactly the same as our, pro as our testing project. We have to then say load name at the very end. We want all of the stuff to be visible on screen, which loads up in an instant, basically. And uh, there's those placeholders. And then we want to run load name so, to, so that we can check if there's the local storage object or not. So we'll want to have the load name back in the index file all the way at the end, like the example right before the end of body script slash script load name call the load name function now if you save it and run it before you do anything the name that was last input should show up automatically and that's by adding a script section before the end of the document. So I'm going to run this, and it says right away, welcome in. It checked in the blink of an eye, is there a local storage object? Yes, there is. So it showed, welcome Anna. If I then add another name, it's got the new name. I can close everything, load it again and it remembers the last name. I'm going to load this in a different web browser. I've been using uh, Firefox, therefore this has been saving to Firefox. This is the thing about local storage, that it saves this data to the web browser itself. It doesn't really save it like a cookie in the traditional sense. It saves it to the web browser. So if I go back and run in Chrome, I have never been asked for a name yet. This is the first time I run this. Therefore it's executing the first part. Local storage equals undefined. Equals equals undefined. So it doesn't show anything. Fine. It says welcome. It says take an art class. It says learn computers. Without a person's name it still makes sense. And then when I when a person goes in and adds their name Welcome Dan. Take an art class, Dan. Learn computers, Dan. And if I close it completely and run it again, it ran the if else again. Now it exists, so now it showed it. Where is the what? It's a. It's. It depends on uh, which browser you're using and what computer you're using. So if you're on a Mac, it'll save it in a library. If, if you're on Windows, it'll save it somewhere in app data in the user folder. So uh, when we get more complex with this, we can see exactly where it's being stored. But I would suggest for the moment, look up where is local storage being saved with the particular web browser you're interested in. Each one saves it a little differently. We saw at W3Schools, if we wanted to delete it, we have uh, local storage.remove item. So we can delete it that way, but we can also go into the full, the the file menu, the file structure, and find it somewhere. But off the top of my head, I don't remember. So if it worked for you here, great! I'll pull my code up here again. Uh, let's take our last break. This will be a short one, just until eight o'clock. I want to make sure this works because then we're going to switch over to the other JavaScript, which is the um, browser detection. So. Um, do a little bit earlier just to shift gears so it's only seven minutes we'll be back at eight and then we'll go on